Hi folks, we're going to continue with some chapter 11 problems and here goes. The Earth is the densest planet in the solar system. The average density of the Earth is 5.513 times 10 to the third kilograms per cubic meter. Calculate the mass of planet Earth assuming that it is a perfect sphere. It's not, but we're going to pretend with a radius of 6.37 times 10 to the sixth meters. So this is a beautiful application of density. Uh, density is mass per unit volume and this time we know the density we know density um, we're looking for mass mass is our n unknown and we're going to have to use that radius in order to find volume now somewhere in your past you may have looked at how the heck do you find the volume of a sphere on the constant sheet I gave you there is a chart that shows uh, circumference and area of a circle, area of a sphere, um, and area, uh, outside area, and also shows volume of a sphere. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the first thing we're going to find is the volume of planet Earth. So the volume of planet Earth is going to be 4 thirds times pi times that radius 6.37 times 10 to the sixth meters it's just about 4,000 miles it's pretty darn big and we're going to cube that number so I'm going to grab my calculator uh, 6.37 to the times 10 to the third and I am going to raise this to the third power um, times pi times 4 divided by 3 and I get a big number and <laughs> the big number I get for the volume of the earth is 1.08 if we carry it out to three sig figs times 10 to the 12th 12th meter squared that's not what I got earlier I'm gonna redo my math okay I'm gonna open parentheses 6.37 times 10 to the 6th close parentheses raise the whole thing to the third power there we go, times pi, see Mary can make boo-boos on her calculator too, times 4 divided by 3, would you believe 1.08 times 10 to the 21st? Much better. All right, that is going to be meters to the third power. That's going to be the volume of the Earth. Now, in order to find the mass of the planet, um, mass then is going to be density, multiplied by volume. Density on average of planet Earth is this number. It's given in the problem. 5.513 times 10 to the third kilograms per meter cubed times 1.08 times 10 to the 21st cubic meters. So that will pass those lovely digits into my calculator and out the other end I get a weight of just about 5.9 well and I did it 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms and when I did it earlier I got 5.96 so it depends on how you carry out your digits that is the mass of the earth it's a big planet we live on all right we're gonna do another one here goes slide this little beastie down a boy weighs 140 pounds. He's standing on his two feet. Each shoe is approximately three inches wide and nine inches long. What pressure does he exert on the ground in pounds per square inch? So here are his, his cute little tootsies and each foot is three inches wide and nine inches long. So the area of each foot is three inches by 9 inches, well 3 times 9 is 27 inches squared. He has, that's one foot, but he has two feet, so two human feet, so I'm going to multiply that by 2, so the total area that he is touching the ground with is going to be 54 square inches. Now I want to know the pressure he's going to exert on the ground in pounds per square inch. Pressure is force divided by area, 140 pounds, divided by 54 inches squared, 
And when I take 140 divided by 54, 140 divided by 54, I get 2.6, because I was kind of loosey-goosey with my digits in the beginning, 2.6 pounds per square inch. Not too bad. All right, next one. Um, the next one is practice with all those wacky, crazy units of pressure. Air pressure changes depending upon the weather. The lowest air pressure ever recorded was wind within a tornado in 1979 is associated with a typhoon in the western Pacific. The reading was 25.69 inches of HG. HG is the atomic symbol for mercury. Convert this into pascals, millimeters of mercury, pounds per square inch, and atmospheres. So we're going to have a little conversion party. Here goes. So I'm going to start with, I've got 25.69 inches of mercury. If you look on that conversion and constant sheet I gave you, there's a whole bunch of conversion factors for pressure. I want to get rid of inches of mercury, and I want to, for the first one, I want to go into pascals. There are one point 0, 1, 3 times 10 to the fifth pascals is equivalent to 29.92 inches of mercury. And when I do the math, I ended up with 86,980 pascals, okay? named after good old Blaise Pascal, the experimenter. Next one, 25.69 inches of mercury and we're going to convert this into millimeters of mercury. So there is a conversion again on that chart. 29.92 inches of mercury are going to be equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. And when I do that, that then ends up being 653 millimeters of mercury next conversion. The next conversion is going to be our 25.69 inches of mercury, and we're going to convert this into pounds per square inch. So 29.92 inches of mercury is 14.7 pounds, pounds per square inch, and when I do that one, I end up with 12.6 pounds per square inch. And last but not least, atmospheres. 25.69 inches of mercury. Our good old TIE fighters are very, very useful things. 29.92 inches of mercury are one atmosphere, and that's going to end up being 0 0.859 atmospheres. Okay. I think we have the time to do maybe one more in this video, so let's do it. Um, in the movie The Italian Job, the uh, the group stole 2,690 kilograms of gold. If all of this gold was loaded into one standard van weighing 4,000 pounds, and the tires each had a surface area that touched the ground of 35 square inches, what would be the air pressure in each tire if the weight was evenly distributed on all four tires? And give your answer in pounds per square inch. Okay, here's what's going on. Um, we have this van, a stylized van, and it's got one, two, three, four tires. That's kind of ugly, but it weighs 4,000 pounds. And we have, besides the van itself, we also have within it 2690 kilograms of gold. Now that is just its mass. We just want to know its weight. So we're going to go ahead and convert that because at the other end we want pounds per square inch. So we're going to want this in pounds. So I'm going to get rid of kilograms, go to pounds. There's 2.20 kilos per pound. And when I do that, I'm going to end up with 5,918 pounds. It actually weighs more than the van. Holy moly. So the total weight of the van plus the gold, total weight is going to be 9,918 pounds total. Now, if that's my total weight, it's then going to be distributed over four tires. Now, each tire is going to have um, 
four tires, each one is going to have 35 inches squared touching the ground. So each tire, one tire, is going to have a surface area of 35 inches squared. But we have four tires. I think I need more room to write. I got it. Why don't I use it? I know. Okay, so when it comes to area, I've got 35 inches squared per tire. And I have a tire, and I have four tires. So when I multiply by four, I'm going to end up with 140 square inches of actual rubber that's actually going to be touching the ground. So that's going to be my total area. And I want to know what is the pressure exerted downward by the weight of the van and the gold in each one of these tires. Well, pressure is force divided by area. I'm going to take the total force in pounds, total area in inches, 9,918 pounds, 140 inches squared. Divide that out, I get 70.8 pounds per square inch, um, which is the pressure that is going to be equal to the air pressure in the tire. Um, that's kind of crazy. They're going to have to have very, very special tires. You don't get those off the lot normally, that kind of air pressure. All right, we will see you later. Bye-bye.